What's going on guys? This is a, a continuation of the Finding Duplicate Images uh, series. Uh, this is going to be part two. In this part, we're going to actually try to find similar images. In the uh, first video, we found duplicate images using hashing. Um, in this video, we're actually going to be trying to find similar images. And let's just uh, take a look at our images once again. Um, last time we had made copies of this one, this one, and this one, and we were able to find them through hashing and delete them. And now in this video, what we're going to do is we're not going to create any additional images. We just want to find similar images. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of similar images. You have one, two, three. Uh, these cats are all similar. They vary by contrast and hue and uh, size but they're all pretty much similar images. So there's a lot of similar images and we're going to try to locate them uh, using something called dehash. It stands for difference hash. All right, and the other thing is we're also going to be using Hamming distance. So I'll explain everything. These are two different algorithms. All right, so we're going to just import all the dependencies. In this case, numpy, matplotlib, and uh, this is just for if you're using Jupyter Notebook. Once again, to read the image files, uh, we use imread. For some reason, I have NumPy twice. Let me get rid of that. Um, we're also going to be importing OpenCV, and we're going to use some of the methods to resize the images. Import OS, time, and from hashlib, we're going to import MD5, which we used in the previous video. All right, so once again, our image directory is this. What we're going to do is change the directory to that, and make sure we've successfully change the directory and we, we're going to check by os.getcwd which stands for get current working directory so let me just run this oops of course i forgot to run the first cell now i run the second cell okay everything is good all right so image files is equals os.listdir and i think we have 42 uh, 43 so we have 43 files and we're just going to look at image file zero. So we're just going to look at the first file of um, this uh, os.listdir. So it should be the name of the uh, the image or the file name. So this is the uh, name of the image. So let's just uh, recheck. So it represents this uh, Barracuda. So we'll just check the shape, 420 by 640 by three, which is a typical image shape. And that's why we need to use hashing because uh, because of the amount of pixels that these uh, images have. All right, so helper function. So now we're going to have these many functions and then eventually we'll have one huge function that incorporates all these uh, helper functions. So the first thing we want to do, um, in this case, we don't need it because I don't think I have any black and white images, but um, it's just asserting that there's a, it's three dimensional. And what we're going to do for a different hash is take the image and we're going to turn it into a gray image. So we take a colored image and we're going to turn it into a gray image. That's why I wanted to make sure that the uh, the image is three channels. So filter images does that. And now what we're doing here is we're going to turn each image into a gray image. Use mb mp.average and you actually uh, multiply each of the channels by these uh, numbers, right? And then you'll take the average of that. And the axis equals two is just letting uh, NumPy know you want to take the averages of the three channels. Um, instead of taking the, the averages of the rows or the columns, we're taking the averages of the uh, three channel. All right, so we'll run that. Let me just make sure we ran the one above. Okay, so I'll run this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to resize and flatten the image. First, we're going to resize it and we can resize it to whatever you want. So the higher the number, the more uh, pixels you're gonna have. So you're going to get more precise uh, fingerprints. If you make it too low, too small, then you might have too many images that are not actually similar, so you'd be getting false positives. The interpolation is just how you resize it. There's different algorithms to how you can actually resize an image. Um, I think this is the default one, inter area, but there's different types of algorithms that um, uh, change the way you resize. Now I'm going to actually be resizing and then flattening in two different ways. So here's where uh, it might get a little confusing, but yeah, so we're going to be flattening the array in a two different ways. One is going to be at row by row. This, if I just use dot flatten, it's going to flatten it row by row. So uh, the best way I can explain it, let me see. Um, so let's see. Um, in this case, it's a two by four. And there's two ways you can flatten it. You can flatten it row by row. So 
in this case we'll have 1326 followed by 5472 or you can have it um, in columns so it'll be 15342762 so there's actually a reason why I actually I'm flattening it two different ways and when we get to the algorithm uh, then everything will become a lot more clear yeah so we're uh, resizing it and then we're flattening it two different ways so we're flattening it uh, the normal way which is row by row and then flattening it if we use this F which I stand I think stands for Fortran um, you'll be flattening it uh, column by column so one five three four two seven six two and now here's where the algorithm comes into play okay so essentially what we're doing is we're going to be finding the intensities or the change in intensities so let me come back up here and imagine this was our picture um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to see if this number to the right is greater than the, the number to the left. So what's going to happen is if it's greater, we put a, a 1, and if it's, if it's uh, less, we put a 0. Essentially what we're doing is we're taking this very complicated um, image with all these uh, values from 0 to 55, and we're shrinking it down to either zeros or 1s. And it's all based on the, the change or the, the gradient direction of the intensity. The gradient is basically just a change in intensity. So in this case, um, if the numbers are higher, going from 1 to 3, it's uh, an increase in the gradient. And if it's um, going from 3 to 2, it's a, a decrease. And an increase is represented by 1, and a decrease is repre represented by 0. We're creating a thumbnail of the gradient of the image. And it's all done by this code. NumPy has a lot of useful functions for mathematical and scientific calculations. And we can take the gradient very easily of the uh, difference row just by using mpdiff. mpdiff takes, um, essentially does what we uh, wanted it to do. It takes a difference between the right number and the left number. So 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, uh, 6 minus 2, and so on. And then we do the same with uh, difference column. The orientation of difference column is a little different. It's still a, a one-dimensional array. So the one-dimensional dim array will be something like 1, 5, 3, 4, 2, 7, 6, 2, something like that. It's, uh, it's still a one-dimensional array, but it's uh, the way it was created is a little different. So that's what we do. We use mpdiv, and it will take the differences. So difference between uh, 5 and 1, 3 and 5, 4 and 2, and it will create, uh, create values. And of course, that's not enough. We need to, we want to make sure that everything greater than zero, the one and everything less than zero is a zero. And this is done by this, um, I think it's called a Boolean indexing or Boolean slicing. Uh, I don't remember the exact term, but uh, difference row uh, greater than zero, it's, uh, it's going to give true and false values. And I'll show you guys how that should look. So it's going to look something like true, false, True, false, something like that. So that's exactly that's what this uh, this indexing is doing. So wherever uh, difference row is greater than uh, zero, we want it a true. And in Python, the value true is actually equal to one, and the value false is actually equal to zero. So we're going to get true and false values for our difference row and difference column. Since we're taking the gradient intensity, the change in intensity, we're mapping the image due to the intensity gradient. So this is going to be our fingerprint of the image. And it's pretty accurate from my experience. So yeah, so we'll have the, uh, the row-wise and the column-wise, and now we just want to combine them. What you can do is just, uh, I used mp.vstack to combine them, and then I flattened it. You actually don't need mp.vstack, you can use mp.hstack to combine everything. And I'll actually give you guys some, ex some examples of how mp.vstack and mp.hstack works. I'll just give you some couple of examples of how those work. So we have we have x and y, right? So we have two arrays. This is an array that's going to pick random numbers between 1 to 5, and the size or the shape of the array is going to be 1 by 5. So it's going to be one, one, uh, one row and five columns. And then we have the y, mp.random.randin. It's going to be the same thing. So I'm essentially creating two arrays. So let me just run this, run this. So here's the first array, 2, 1, 4, 3, 3, and the second array. Remember, we're just picking random numbers between 1 and 5. So these are both uh, one-dimensional, two different arrays. And now let's look at what mp.vstack does. Okay, mp.vstack. As you can see, it creates one array, but it stacks them uh, vertically. So if you look at the shape, let's look at the... Uh, let's do the x.shape, comma, y.shape. Okay, so we have 1 by, one by 5, 1 by 5. Now if we use the vstack... 
it becomes a two by five. And uh, let me just uh, run this again, mp.v stack. Okay, so once again, this is how it originally looks with VStack. And if we flatten it, it just takes this part and it concats it, um, concatenates it to this part. So it's 21433 and we combine it with 12344. But instead of using the VStack, what we could have done is see these original um, two different arrays. What we could have done is use HStack to uh, combine these um, horizontally. So if I do this, it does the same thing as above. The above just uh, takes the VStack and flattens it. So let's just go back up here. And the other thing I guess I'll show you is mp.diff and, and difference row greater than zero. So let me just show you guys this as well. Let's see. Okay, so we have mp.hstack. So I'll assign this to x equals mp.hstack. Let's just run x. Now it's uh, mp.diff x. So let's just run this. As you can see, it's one minus two is negative one. Then you have four minus one is three. Three minus four is negative one. Three minus three is zero. So it's essentially uh, taking the difference. And now let me just show you what Boolean indexing, I think that's what it's called, Boolean indexing does. So we have x, x is greater than zero. Actually, x is greater than zero everywhere. So let me just use uh, x is greater than one. Okay, x is greater than one and it will get a bunch of Boolean values. So the first one is true, the second one is false because one is not greater than one. True, 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 and then we get another false for this one. So that's what uh, the above difference row and difference column uh, greater than zero, that's exactly what's going on. So hopefully that's not too confusing. There's a lot of information if you guys are not familiar, familiar with NumPy. Um, that's probably a lot to take in, but you can watch the video over and hopefully you'll get the gist of it. Hopefully it's not too bad. All right, so we're done with all the helper functions. And now we're going to, so essentially what we're going to return is one big flattened array that holds the, the blueprint or the thumbnail, the fingerprint of the image. Um, so this is just file hash, which is uh, taking the hash of the, of the array or whatever we put into here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take all these functions. So we'll, the filter images, the image grade resize, and the intensity difference. And we're going to pull all that into one big function. So essentially we're going to take the image. So the first thing we do is turn into a gray image. Then we take that gray image and we're going to resize it to the height and, height and width. And then we're going to take uh, the intensity difference of um, row res and column res and get the difference and we're going to return the difference. So once we have the difference, what we're going to do is take the hash of the difference. Essentially what we're doing is we're taking image and we're creating a compact version of the image, essentially uh, creating a custom hash. And then we're taking that and we're uh, a hash algorithm to create a real hash. So let's see. So that's essentially what we're doing here. We're going to create a dictionary of all the hash values. Um, we're going to use that as the key and the image name itself as the value. All right, so, so we have an empty dictionary. Uh, we're going to store the duplicates and then we have a hash ds. We don't really need this. In this case, these are the two important ones. This is going to hold the keys and the values so we can check for duplicates and, and we're going to add all the duplicates in this uh, duplicates list. All right, so for, for each image, what we do is we calculate the difference score, the ds. Um, here we're just we're appending it. We don't need this line. Um, this is the line we need. We, we're going to create a hash out of that um, difference score and if the hash is not in our dictionary, we're going to uh, create an entry. Else, we're just going to append the image and we're going to get the original image. All right, so that's essentially our function. All right, so I'll run this. Okay, so filter images, remember it takes all the images and makes sure that there's um, no gray images. And then we're going to fit that into our difference score uh, dict hash, which is this huge function here. Remember, it takes the image list and we uh, iterate through all the images. All right, so let me just run this. And different score is not defined. Okay, so I need to go back and yeah, I missed a bunch of uh, functions. So let me run this. Um, I didn't run this. Okay. Then I got to run this, this, this. Okay. So now it's calculating, it's creating a dictionary. And since I only have 42 images, it does it pretty quickly. Now I'm going to run and see if we found any duplicates. 
So unfortunately, we found zero duplicates. So despite using um, the gradient intensity, a, a, a well-known formula, difference hash, uh, we were not able to locate any uh, duplicates. So there were not exact matches. When this happens, we have something called Hamming distances, which I will go over in the next video because I think this video has gone on long enough. In the next video, I will discuss how we can use Hamming distance to be able to find similar images.